This is part 40 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In our previous videos in the series, we discussed Anchor, Image and Environment Tag Helpers. In this video, we'll discuss Form Tag Helpers in ASP.NET Core that help us create forms. We have a Tag Helper with name Form Tag Helper that help us create the form itself. And then to create the individual controls of the form, we have Input, Label, Select and Text Area Tag Helpers. We also have validation tag helpers. We'll discuss form validation and model binding in our upcoming videos in this series. By the end of this video, we want to create a form using all these tag helpers and then style it using the bootstrap styling classes. We want the form to look like this. We're going to use this form to capture all the data that we need to create a new employee. At the moment, when we click on this create navigation menu item, we see 404 error. That's because we don't have this create action within our home controller and its associated view. In the home controller class, let's include the create action method. This method is going to be public, returns view result. The name of the action method is create and it's going to return a view. We don't have the corresponding view for the create action. Let's add it to the home folder. We are adding it to the home folder because the name of the controller is home controller. Select razor view and let's name our view create.cshtml. The first thing that we're going to do here is specify the model for this view. By including the model, we create a strongly typed view. With strongly typed view, we have IntelliSense autocomplete and compile time error checking. If you recollect, we're going to use this view to create a new employee. So the model for this view is going to be our employee class. Let's pass the page title to the layout view using view bag. Let's set the page title to create employee. To create the form, we use form tag helper. After we fill this form with data and submit it to the server by clicking this create button, we want to post this form to the create action within our home controller. For that, we're going to make use of two tag helpers, asp-controller and asp-action. The controller is home and the action is create. We want to submit this form using a POST request. We specify that by using the method attribute and setting its value to POST. Let's save all our changes so far and see what we have got. We don't have the 404 error anymore and when we view the page source, notice the generated HTML. This form tag helper code that we have here generated this HTML. We have the form tag itself and when we submit the form, we want to issue a POST request and look at the action attribute value. When this form is submitted, we want to post it to the create action of the home controller. When we issue a GET request to this URL, that is slash home slash create, it is the create action within our home controller that is returning us the create view. Once we have the create view, we fill out the required data. And then once we click this create button, the form will be posted. By default, it will be posted to the same URL that served us this create form. This means even if we remove these two tag helpers, asp-controller and asp-action from this form tag and then submit this form by clicking this create button, it will still be posted to this same URL slash home slash create because this is the URL which initially served us this create form. Next, we want this name input element on our create employee form to capture the employee name. For that, we are going to use the input tag helper. We use ASP for tag helper to associate this input element with name property of our employee class. Notice we also have IntelliSense. We see all the properties of our employee class, ID name, email and department. Notice we now have this input element on our create employee form to capture the name of the employee. If we take a look at the page source, we have this input element generated by our input tag helper. Notice the type attribute is set to text. Both ID and name attributes 
are set to name that's because that is the property of the employee class to which we are binding this input element and then finally the value attribute is set to an empty string the name attribute is required and it is this attribute that maps the value that we type in this input element to the name property of our employee model class this is done by a process called model binding we'll discuss model binding in detail in our next video next we need this name label for that we're going to make use of label tag helper so just above the input tag helper let's use label tag helper and set asp-4 equals name this generates a label with the for attribute set to a value of name the display text also will be name let's quickly verify this notice the display text of the label is name and its for attribute value is also name and notice the id attribute value of this input element it is also name so the for attribute is linking this label with this input element this means when i click on this name label notice the input element receives focus next we need a label and an input element for email first let's wrap this label and the input element with a div and then make a copy including the div element and finally change asp-4 tag helper value to bind to the email property the last form control that we want on this create employee form is the select element for selecting department so let's make another copy of this development and then bind to the department property instead of an input element we want select element so for that let's use the select tag helper and then bind asp-4 to the department property of our employee class next we need the options for the select element there are several ways to specify the options one way is to hard code the options within the HTML right here the other option is to load the data from a database table and then bind the data to the select element we'll discuss how to do that in a later video we're going to use a third approach and that is to bind the select element to an enum we don't have a department enum within our application at the moment so let's add it to this models folder so I'm going to right click on the models folder add new item let's name the file dept.cs we want to create an enum so let's change this class keyword to enum let's leave the name of the enum as dept and here are the different options let's start with none hr it and finally payroll now we want to bind this dept enum to this department select element and the way we do that is by using asp-items tag helper notice when i hover the mouse over this asp-items tag helper expects i enumerable of select list item as the value to get an i enumerable of select list item we're going to use an html helper and that is this method get enum select list and this method expects a generic parameter and the generic parameter that we are going to pass is our enum type dept we need to make two more changes at the moment within our employee class the department property type is string let's change this to our enum type dept at this point when we build the solution notice we have compilation errors that's because we are setting the department property to a string value we need to change this to our dept enum let's set this to dept.it and the same here now when we build our solution we have a successful build let's take a look at the browser now notice we have the three form controls along with the labels when I click on a label its associated input element receives focus and if we look at the options that we have for this department select list they are the same options that we specified in our DEPT enum let's also take a look at the HTML source here is the department label select element 
and the list of options. Finally, we also need this Create Submit button. First, let's include a div element and inside that, let's create a button element. The type of button is going to be Submit and the text on the button is Create. At the moment, our Create Employee form looks like this but we want to apply bootstrap styles to the form controls and the create button so the form looks like this. In the interest of time, I have done this off screen. Here is that same code with bootstrap style classes applied. I'll have this code available on my blog and include the link in the description of this video. With the bootstrap styles applied, this is how our create employee form looks now. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.